We are back with another Poco phone. I know you love mid-rangers and I love talking about them. And this one looks mid-rangey as heck. It's the Poco X5 Pro 5G, which is what we've been waiting for on Poco phones. And they finally listened. We have this nice, the standard kind of black and yellow text that Poco loves. And honestly, I love, and who is it Wiz Khalifa loves? Bumblebees. You like jazz? Uh, nothing too crazy about the box, just says Poco X5 Pro all over the place and what we have for specs in the back. But I like to be surprised. Well, I guess not too surprised because I looked. Spoiler alert. We have the, the Poco. Oh, someone's definitely been here because it's got fingerprints all over it. <laughs> Two million subs, no respect. We've got the SIM popper. We've got our handy dandy case. Feels like the included case with the Poco phone. And what else we got in here? Ooh, okay. <laughs> we'll, come back. we'll come back to this guy. But in here we got our 67 watt Euro charger and the orange USB A to C for that fast charging. And then we have our meter long A to C cable, again with those nice colored orange tips. And that's it, we're already onto the phone, no frills here in the box, but ooh, I gotta say, I really like this yellow. I'm actually not a huge fan of the color yellow, but this is like a frosted glass yellow. So it might look like it's kind of the reflection that's making it that pale, but no, it's just like a, a nice frosted yellow. Oh, it's got some goo on it, but that, that's fine. What's a, what's a little goo? We got our branding here for 5G and all of the safety things. And of course that big old Poco logo. And this looks like it's part of the camera bump, but it's not. It's just flat, flush, colored plastic. It is a plastic frame and a plastic back with the glass front, which is fine. I think it actually feels pretty nice in the hand. And we have our cameras on the back here, but before we get too far into that, let's take a look at what we have on this phone. So we have our volume rockers here. Ooh, good sounding buttons. And then the yellow power button slash fingerprint scanner. I can't get over those buttons, so that sounds great. On the top, we got our, well, we got my favorite, the IR blaster, the mic hole, one of our dual speakers, and the headphone jack, because again, this phone's under $1,000, so it has all the features you want. On the left side here, we got absolutely nothing, just that nice rail. And on the bottom, we have our SIM tray, mic hole, USB-C, and speaker. And I'm just gonna open it up here, as I know it's a dual SIM phone, but I wanna see if it has uh, expansion. Does this get rid of the SD card slot, or does it keep it? Drum roll. Ooh, just dual nano. So they got rid of the headphone expansion even compared to the M5S, which we've covered previously. A little disappointing. I mean, again, one of those weird things where these mid-range phones seem to have features like that, but I guess lacking an SD card slot is a feature that's now falling down from the flagships into the mid-range, but I hope this isn't something that kind of sticks around. On the front here, we have our 6.67 inch Full HD plus AMOLED display and it's 120 Hertz. It is really nice to have that uh, high speed for when you're scrolling through feeds or even just your settings on your phone and it doesn't look so choppy. So really glad to see it here. And it's Gorilla Glass 5 on the front. So again, not the newest, hottest Gorilla Glass, but pretty good. I don't know what it is about this aspect ratio for just the rails and how flat it is, but it doesn't feel like it fits great in my hands. And yet this one kind of noticeably stands out as like not feeling great. And as you can see, I can't reach all the edges super comfortably, which isn't ideal, but if you have bigger hands, maybe you won't notice, or if you consistently two hand your phone, whatever, it is obviously good for media to have a larger size phone. As for thickness, only 7.9 millimeters thick, which I, we've deemed, I don't know what millimeters are, but it's thin, and again, the camera bump is not too big, especially when we have a whopping 108 megapixel main cam. That's nuts. It's too much. We also have the eight megapixel ultra wide and two megapixel macro, which you're gonna use all the time, I can tell. This is the year you do macro photography at two megapixels, plenty. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, that's about it. It's a very minimal phone, just like a slat with bright yellow coloring. So I guess all that's left is to turn it on. But first, let me tell you about our sponsor, Floatplane. What? <laughs> that's us. Have you ever watched a short circuit video or LTT and wondered, how do they do that? Well, Floatplane's a place for you. It's where we upload exclusive vlogs, behind the scenes, and funny may -mays. It's a good time. Let's take a look. All right, we got Floatplane up here where we put all of our videos across all of our channels as well as exclusives. So you can easily just type in what you're looking for, exclusives to see everything, or we're gonna type in vlog, because that's where my specialty comes in. As we can see here, we got quite a few different vlogs we made. And I mean, let's just randomly select a few, like maybe 
the Paris Evnia launch, or the great Sony FW900 CRT road trip, or behind the scenes at Nanosys, where James, you were there. Remember Nanosys? Yes. That was a great time. These ones are great, and I'm not biased because I shot and edited them, but hey, they're great times where you can see some of the behind the scenes of what we've done when we go to all these different places or how it actually works to make a video. I think the Nanosys vlog is really good for that where you can see James actually writing, talking to different Nanosys employees, and then shooting the video. It's really cool to see how we do it and hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight into what it's like to work for what, a multinational corporation. So if you wanna see more from us and how we work, make sure to subscribe to Floatplane for just five or 10 bucks a month at lmg.gg slash scfloatplane. All right, well, the phone was dead, so it's plugged into the charger now. We can test out that fast charging because they actually don't have an advertised charge time with their, their fast charger. We're not using it, so we'll never know, but it is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty good size, especially for, again, a, a mid-ranger phone. They do advertise some interesting battery lengths. So first for call time, they advertise 28 hours, so plenty for you and your significant other to chat on the phone literally all day. They also advertise 20 hours of video playback, so you can binge watch Malcolm in the Middle again all day. And then finally, they offer 21 hours of reading time, which is not a spec I've really ever heard of, but go nuts with your ebook. As for brightness, it does get pretty dim. So if you like to use your phone at night or while you're in bed, you won't have your eyes absolutely searing, but the max brightness isn't fantastic. So it's only 500 nits with a max of 900 peak brightness, which isn't gonna be great for outdoor use. Like obviously it will be usable, but again, be aware if you're coming from a higher end flagship, those are hitting up to like 2000 nits. So it's gonna be quite a big difference, but you will be able to survive with something like this. Now this does have the fingerprint scanner built into the power button. So let's give that a try and make sure it's not completely awful. All right, this seems a bit excessive. This is, <laughs> this is taking a hot minute. <laughs> All right, this better work well. Uh, and it's asking if you wanna add face, it does have the AI face unlock as well. But uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah, not bad. Goes right in. I mean, it's a fingerprint scanner, it works. I don't think I mentioned this is MIUI 14 built on Android 12, and there is a ton of bloatware. Uh, AliExpress, Bubble Shooter, uh, Crazy Juicer, Dust Settle. There's a ton of stuff that just comes default on these that, again, I am not a fan of. You have to go through and delete them manually. Always a bummer. Some of the ways that these phones stay cheap is actually by selling the space on these phones that they come preloaded with these certain apps. So if that's a way of keeping the price down, I guess that's fine. All right, let's take a look at the screen and speakers by doing some crab raving. It sounds okay. Definitely not the best sounding phone I've ever heard, but I think it's not anything awful. It's more apparent that the sound is louder on the left side instead of that dual speaker on this right side. But when you hold it up to your ear, there is some separation, but it doesn't feel wide. If you're really hoping for Dolby Atmos and an affordable phone, I don't think you're gonna really have that expectation here. As for the screen, it looks good. Nothing to really complain about here. Everything's crisp. It is a you know full HD plus screen. It's not gonna be extremely sharp, but it does look pretty good. What is noticeable though, is that camera bump wobble. It's on quite a bit of an angle and wobbles around quite a bit. Not great, but also not really avoidable with any phone unless you have the Pixel 7, which is not gonna rock, but it's gonna be on a definite angle there. All right, let's take a look at these cameras and see if that 108 megapixel camera kicks everything else to the curb. We got our friendly faces over here. James doing work. We have our ultra wide. Now it does show a zoom button, but do know it is just cropping in on that 108 megapixel camera. So it's nothing too, too wild there. And we got to try out our macro mode. All right, we have our model here. Let's see how that macro camera does. I'm assuming it's just gonna automatically switch to it here. Oh, maybe. Wow, there's a lot of bokeh there. All right, you know what? For a, a two megapixel photo, it doesn't look bad. It's definitely noisy, but the bokeh looks really good and that depth of field, it's pretty solid. Definitely not bad. I don't know how often you'll use a macro camera, uh, especially enough to have its own dedicated lens. A lot of them will use the ultra wide lens just as a macro, but Obviously it's kind of nice to have. For the other shots here, the 2X zoom does look good. You do lose a little bit of uh, clarity because again, it's just punching into that regular 108 megapixel sensor, but I don't think it looks bad at all. All right, this is the ultra wide and it's got an interesting look. It's almost like film, <laughs> which I don't think it should be for eight megapixels, but the colors are just really kind of deep. There's a lot, you lose a lot of the detail between James's blue shirt and his green pants that look brown. Uh, it's very odd. 
And when you zoom in, his hands have lost all sort of quality and it just looks bit crushed, which is very odd. Onto the main camera, it's still not fantastic. As you can see, if we zoom in on his hands here, James's hands, again, are pretty crushed. Like they, 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 it doesn't look like there's enough pixels, even though that 108 megapixel sensor is binning down to a 12 megapixel photo. So it's taking nine pixels, making one big pixel to hopefully give you better night shots. But we can take a photo in the pro mode that will be just the straight 108 megapixel mode. So let's try that. Wow, what fine young gentleman. Let's take a look at that photo. So with this 108 one, it seems to be affected by our studio lighting a bit more, but it does look a bit sharper. Again, not a great photo. I don't know if it's like an AI trying to smooth or beautify or sharpen, but it doesn't seem to be doing quite great. Uh, James does look a little bit like a painting. So something to be aware of, even though on paper it does have some uh, impressive specs, it might not actually translate to what you're gonna be taking in your day-to-day -day life. Selfie time. I love taking selfies. I'm a millennial guy. Is millennials know for selfies? I don't know, but I'm taking one. Looks like we got our, our little star is highlighted here. So there's definitely some filters on. Original. There's me in all my glory. <laughs> Selfies look good. I look sharp. I'm glad there's just an original mode again We have seen it before where you just have to turn everything down by itself, which I was not a fan of so Poco has changed their ways Amazing video again here. Uh, I'm connected to a cable gonna have to unplug <clears throat> Now again adjustments bright studio lights. They're leaving it blown out to keep me fairly exposed Which is I think the the better way to do things my skin color looks accurate even with James's very red jacket We can see all the colors uh, do look pretty lifelike, which is great to that see too red too red There's no such thing the video looks good. I don't think it sounds good though So if you do want to use this as a sort of loggy phone, I actually do think it could be viable Like it does look quite sharp steady everything like that. It does film at 1080p 60 on the front camera So pretty solid, but that mic is pretty darn tinny, but Maybe the main camera is better. Here we are taking a video. There he is, there's James, I'm Jocelyn. This doesn't have any sort of uh, optical limb stabilization, but uh, yeah, maybe it still looks good. We're zooming. Oh, what is he swatting at? Wow, it goes 6X. Does it go all the way out? To 1X, cool. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this is really weird. I was gonna talk about the video quality, but there's a related videos bar at the bottom. And these are not videos on the phone. I'm guessing it's like Billy Billy or some other YouTube knockoff. Really weird to have in your gallery. I guess that's a thing. Uh, as for the actual video quality, it looked really good. The stabilization looks like there's OIS built in, but they don't set it as any sort of spec. And the mic is still not great. So again, be aware if you're gonna use it. Video, very, very viable on this, but you'd want another audio solution. But that's not why you bought this phone, right? You bought this phone because you are a gamer. So let's try gaming. We gotta talk about what's in this thing. It's got the Snapdragon 778G, which is a pretty strong mid-range performer. It should be able to handle most anything you throw at it, and in Genshin or you know COD Mobile, any of those more intense games, it'll probably be able to handle medium to high, depending on how sensitive you are to that 60 FPS, but if it's something more basic or you're fine with low settings, you should be able to hit 60 easily or over 60 since the screen supports it, if the game does. So we're in the uh, settings for Genshin Impact's visuals. I put it into medium and it warned me that this phone probably can't handle it and it's gonna go into overclocked mode, which is very hardcore. If you do it on low, it says it'll be smooth, but I would like to try medium. I feel like it should be able to handle that. And maybe part of it's because it's not fully charged, but I've got confidence, yeah. It's a little choppy so far, but maybe it just needs to load for a second. I gotta say, even at medium, this game looks pretty good. And now it is running a, a bit smoother, but as you walk into different areas, it is choppy. Like, this is not a smooth 60. Be aware, again, this is a mid-range phone, so maybe put your expectations in, like, the mid-range, you know? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Medium settings. Medium. It's got great specs on paper for the camera. It's got great specs on paper for the SOC. It's got IP53 water resistance. It doesn't have wireless charging, but it does have 5G and an IR blaster. It costs 295 US dollars. I do think the price is starting to creep up a little bit there, like 300 US dollars for this. It really depends on your use case. If you're someone who's playing Genshin Impact, maybe get something different. If you're somebody who takes a lot of photos, 
may be looking at something different. But if you want a general all-around phone that's gonna be decent at everything and just that the odd time that you wanna play games, you can, and you know, when you're out with friends, you just wanna be able to take a quick photo or a video at a concert, I think this will do fine. But I do feel this budget range is starting to get pretty darn competitive as we'll start to see with some of the devices coming out for MWC and into this new year. So if you're in for a phone right now and you really need something that's gonna do you well, this might be it, but this isn't a review. I'm not telling you what to do. Do not say this is a review. <laughs> this is something I've only been using for the last hour. So this phone might not be enticing for very long. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Short Circuit. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe right now.